Michigan voters, 100,000 of them, Michigan Democrats, sent a message to the Biden campaign. They said, we are not happy with you. That's a problem. And both of these candidates can lose to each other. And they're the only candidates, potentially, that could lose to each other. That's a problem for both of these campaigns. And it's why there's a lot of angst and hand wringing that's still going on within the parties. While President Joe Biden handily won Michigan's Democratic primary, I mean, there isn't much of a Democratic primary to begin with, around 100,000 Arab and Muslim voters in the state chose to abandon the president and mark uncommitted on their ballots instead. Now, take a look at this chart of the Democratic primary results in the state. Biden did receive 81.1% of the vote and locked down 115 delegates, but He lost two delegates to uncommitted, which represented 13.3% of the vote. The protest vote was meant to send a strong message to Biden about their displeasure toward the president's support for Israel's brutal war in Gaza. But it wasn't just Arab American voters who made their views on Biden crystal clear. So did young voters. It was also the college counties, like around Ann Arbor, that you had high numbers of people voting uncommitted. What can President Biden do in terms of outreach to younger voters that he hasn't done already? I mean, he's already forgiven all the student debt that he can. He's already showing up on Seth Meyers and TikTok. How does he reach the younger crowd? He's, he went on Seth Meyers show and he's on TikTok. What's wrong with these young people? Look, it's hilarious how befuddled the CNN host is here. But what about Biden's means tested student debt relief? These voters are clearly in, look, these voters are pretty clear in what they want from Biden. And they have been for months. So how about you listen to them? How about some accountability for the far right government of Israel, which openly states its desire for ethnic cleansing in Gaza? Those who casted protest votes yesterday, want a permanent ceasefire. They want the president to stop sending bombs to Israel at the very least. But the president is clearly willing to commit political suicide just to demonstrate his unwavering devotion to Benjamin Netanyahu, a man Biden doesn't even like and has accused of engaging in indiscriminate bombing in Gaza. So CNN is either playing dumb or they're so out of touch that they'll routinely humiliate themselves on national television with their brain dead analysis. Yes, student debt relief is a good thing that Biden has accomplished, with a ton of caveats, by the way. His program only applies to federal loans and borrowers who have made payments for a decade. Only the politically challenged would think that alone would be enough to motivate young voters to support him despite his cozy relations with Israel's genocidal government. Even when smart people lay out the dynamics of this battle to CNN hosts, they get shut down. Nina Turner experienced that last night while talking to Anderson Cooper. While this president was in the ice cream shop saying, I think there's gonna be a ceasefire, 30,000 people have been slaughtered. People are living in famine, they can't get medical care. So it can't come soon enough for them. And that was really the weight that I picked up on when I was in Dearborn. So we get to be comfortable and talk about this like these people are widgets when they are in fact suffering. And I am young enough to remember colleagues when Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib and also Congresswoman Cori Bush called for a ceasefire very early on, they were called abhorrent. Now fast forward to all of these bodies laying in the wake and people who are living through this every single day. So I, I by the way, there's also been slaughter in, in Israel I was gonna as well. say, so, yeah. so there, there's, yeah, no, there's a lot get, of pain on both sides. No, so I'm not, really I'm not. a lecture on the problem, no, but I'm talking about yeah. the, the politics of this tonight. We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members and then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference, click join now. Anderson Cooper doesn't need a lecture, okay? So how about you tell us why voters are upset with Biden without explaining why voters are upset with Biden? Cooper is clearly a Democrat himself, but when it comes to Israel, he's obviously willing to support a far right government, which includes extremists like Itamar Ben Gavir and Bazalel Smotrich. 
That contradiction is apparently embarrassing for him because he later tried to shut Turner down when she accurately described the political makeup of Israel's parliament. To you would be a victory as somebody was calling yeah. for this uncommitted vote. What to you would be a victory tonight on, to get that message That's, across? I'm not denying that pain. All I'm saying that at a certain point after October the 7th, it becomes clear. I mean, you have a right wing prime minister. Right. We don't need to do this. But, but you understand what I'm saying? I'm not denying anybody's pain. How does one expect to provide political analysis to their audience when they themselves seem completely disinterested in the truth or lack the intellectual curiosity necessary to do their job adequately? Cooper should consider those questions. But anyway, let's move off this media critique and get back to the election. Now, if Biden can't secure votes from the Arab and Muslim community in addition to young voters in Michigan, He's very likely going to lose the state in the general election. And if he loses the state, it's very likely he's going to lose the general election in November. Remember, several polls show Biden trailing Trump in every single swing state at the moment. He won Michigan in 2020 by a little more than 150,000 votes. But more than 100,000 people who typically would have voted for him actually voted against him in this primary. Just take a look at what happened in Dearborn alone yesterday. Uh, these are the unofficial results from the city of Dearborn, but on city letterhead, this is what Joe Biden received. Again, forgive me, 1,141 votes. Dean Phillips, 54 votes. An uncommitted, make sure I get this right, 3,703 votes. So that's a wow. If you look at it this way, this is 23%. And this is 75%. Um, and so this is just the city of Dearborn, but that is where the biggest pocket of the Muslim American, the Arab American population. This is a place President Biden carried big time in 2020. I mean, he did carry it in 2020, but not big time. 150,000 votes isn't that big of a deal, especially when you consider the fact that more than 100,000 voters voted against him in the Democratic primary in Michigan just yesterday. Now, the Democratic Party is hoping that the war in Gaza won't be a problem for Biden or the Democrats in the general because it will likely end between now and November. By then, Americans will shift their focus to other things. Maybe they're right. But it is also true that Benjamin Netanyahu does not want to end the war because once he does, he has to contend with corruption charges and an Israeli public that increasingly wants to oust him from power. And he doesn't want to go away, he likes power. In other words, Bibi and Biden have conflicting interests here. But even if the war does end soon and Americans forget about the carnage that Biden signed off on in Gaza, there's also the migrant crisis and you know sticky inflation impacting the cost of groceries. These aren't easy issues either. Biden might attempt to enact an executive order at the nation's southern border, but he's sure to get challenged in court if he does. And he'll be sure to draw the ire of progressives who don't even believe that there's a migrant crisis in the first place. Sometimes we have, as Democrats have to grow a little bit of a spine around here. And part of that means defending immigration as a core value of the United States of America. Yes, on a moral and on an identity basis, but on a nuts and bolts basis. The United States, our culture, our population, our economy needs immigration like lungs need oxygen. And when you cut it off, we will start to die. Wow, that was some pretty extreme language. But to be quite frank, I do overall agree with AOC that immigration is an important part of our country. Immigrants are an important part of our economy, that is all true. But it's also true that there is a lack of control at our southern border and that major cities, including New York City, has been completely overwhelmed with migrants who need to be sheltered. And the federal government has failed to provide the resources necessary to these cities for them to respond to the crisis adequately. 
And look, I mean, just yesterday, just yesterday, Gallup released its latest poll showing that illegal immigration is the top concern among American voters. Only 20% of voters said that immigration was the most important problem facing the country in January. But this month, the month of February, that percentage jumped up to 28%. I'm not sure denying that there's a problem is all that politically tactful, but okay. Look, AOC has already publicly endorsed Biden, so I doubt she'll change her mind if he uses executive orders to shut the border down. But progressive voters might not be on board. Finally, there's nothing Biden can do about his age. Homeboy's old. It's just the truth. And honestly, I find myself bracing for impact every time that man makes a public appearance. Truth is, there's an iceberg straight ahead for Democrats. And for anyone concerned about Trump winning and dismantling our democratic process, no one in the Democratic Party seems concerned that we're barreling toward that iceberg. Their actions and providing cover for an incredibly vulnerable and weak presidential candidate really does say it all.